Hey, welcome. This is Sig with Fish Out Loud. Really excited to share some information with you today. So make sure you stay to the very end and watch how I catch this monster hybrid striper on the G rig from G Funk Baits. Awesome. I'm also going to be putting one together at the very end, kind of show you the tricks that I learned from the owner of G Funk Baits, Mr. Jason Brothka, who's not only a dear friend of mine, but comes out with a phenomenal product. Okay, I'm a little biased, okay? We've been fishing together for over 20 years. So stay tuned. Also get a chance, take a look at some of the fishoutloud.com merch that I've got on the site. This one is, I'm not a fishing guide, but $100 is $100. I got some cool shirts um, and some merch. So check it out when you get a chance. All right, get ready. Here we go for some fish catching action. Yeah! Woo! Yeah! Woo! Got one! Ha ah, ah, ha ah, ah. Yeah! Woo! My gosh, this thing swam! Come on, baby! Oh! Yeah, look at that. Gotcha. Huh, gotcha. All right. 
There we go. First striper here. Blackwater River. Oh, this is awesome, man. He smoked my G-Rig. All right. I'm going to put him in the live well and take some pictures here. Be right back. All right. Got a real nice striper here. This is awesome, guys. Um, he smoked my um, G-Rig from G-Funk Baits. Jason, thank you so much, man. This is awesome. Look at this sucker, man. I'm going to wait real quick. Be right back. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna let him go here, guys. We're gonna let him go. Six and a half pounds. Oh. Oh. Six and a half pounder, man. Smoke completely demolished my G Funk uh, uh, rig which is awesome, man. Thanks, Jason Brofka. You guys are awesome, making awesome bait. Well, I saw him coming up and just smoke it. And then it was like, freight train, better put on. I let this, I was using 20 pound um, Maxima, it's tough stuff, green stuff. No fluorocarbon here. Um, didn't really matter, that fish wanted it. All right, guys, remember, you guys are just one cast away. bass here here let me hold them up a little closer there you go there you go on the g-funk rig man I'm telling you they love it gotcha all right remember you guys are just one cast away <clears throat> hey all right that hybrid striper would go six and a half pounds so uh, these, are, these are stripers that they plant here. They're hybrids. Uh, they can't reproduce, um, I'm being told. And correct me if I'm wrong here. But they also have some original stripers, which can grow up in the 30-plus range. All I know is that six-and-a-half-pounder, when he ate my G-Rig, he actually crushed it. A uh, couple things that I've learned over the years by losing fish is when you have a big fish, just come up and, and crush a bait of yours, be ready, I got my rod here, be ready with your thumb on, on the spool. Because what I had to do, and it took me a second, because I kept pushing the button um, and just kind of free spool it, holding on to it, and let it, just give it some line, they're not going anywhere. In this case, man, he was heading towards the bridge pilings, um, and you know, I eventually worked him out. I did have to cut about eight foot of line off because somehow he did get in there um, after I caught him because, you know, it was frayed. What was I using? Okay, I'm using a pretty stout rod. It's a five power. It's um, a custom rod that I always have built, um, revolver style. And um, I was using a Shimano Rio. I'm using 20 pound. In this case, I'm just using a regular old mono filament, a Maxima. Um, you know, I wouldn't go any less than 20 pounds when you're throwing one of these um, G rigs, Alabama rigs is what they're originally called, but I just use these G Funk Bates G rig, they call it. And um, 20 pound floral, 20 pound mono. I, I like throwing mono. It everyone's gotten away from monofilament, but you know, they don't care. They see something flashing, they're not going to sit there and go, oh, is that monofilament or is that, oh. I don't know if I'm going to eat it because it's monofilament. 
So I was using 20 pound. Um, Maxima is just a phenomenal fishing line. Not much talked about it, but I'm telling you right now, when I've got big fish on, on I wanna make sure I got my Maxima. So uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go, kinda go over everything. Now, I have a lot of input from um, Jason Brofka from G-Funk Baits, and I value his input, and this is what he does, and I do exactly what he tells me to do. Now, you guys may have heard something different. You may do something different. God bless you, okay? But this is for you that wanna start trying some of these Alabama rigs slash uh, G rigs, A rigs, and start using it. So kinda share with you what I do. First of all, um, the size that we use is, I use, here in Florida, you can have five hooks on it. Doesn't matter, I want three hooks, okay? So we use a 3.8 inch size. I like Kitek. So if you're going for the first time, um, the Pro Blue 3.8 inch, and then I use a 2.8 inch um, small one, use two of these. So two of these at the top, three of these at the bottom. I'm gonna show you right now as I take it out of the package, um, get this, this brand new one because the other one obviously got destroyed. Now, you also saw me catching the largemouth. So any predator fish that sees some baits coming, they're gonna crush it, just a matter of time. So out of the package, this is how it looks. Hope you can see that. Get it off to the side here a little bit. All right, so what I do is I take these first top two and kind of put a bend in it like this, like this, all right? And then the bottom two, I'm gonna bend a little bit here and then bend it back up. A bend and a bend back up. I'm gonna take a picture of this when, I, when it's done. Um, so there we go. And then I'm gonna, again, bend these two little ones up and then kind of over, bend it up and a little bit over, okay? And I'll adjust this as I'm working on it, but I'm gonna take a picture of it, show it to you guys so you can get a better idea of how the band. So you always got one that's sticking out a little bit longer, okay? So I'm taking, I'm not gonna put these on right now, but I'm taking two one eighth ounce swim jig heads. I'm putting the 3.8, make sure I got 3.8 inch. I'm gonna stick one there, eighth ounce, the eighth ounce here, okay? And then I'm gonna stick a quarter ounce here. So what happens is when you're throwing it, the way g Funk has designed these, these um, Alabama rigs, which are called G-Rigs, is the moment it hits the water, the moment you take a couple cranks, it adjusts itself and it's up and running, okay? A lot of the other ones, you know, they'll go sideways and things. So we're trying to balance it out the best we can. The moment it hits the water and you start, let it fall, you start cranking on it, it adjusts itself and now we got this coming up like this, okay? Again, I'm gonna show you an image here of how it's supposed to look. But we got on the two outer ones, low, that are just a little lower, I've got eighth ounce, the, the center one, which is mainly where they crush it at when they, when they see this, because it's out here a little bit longer, I got a quarter ounce, I'm using quarter ounce. So eighth ounce, two of them, one quarter ounce, and these are just dummies, okay? The little ones, okay? The final thing I do on the quarter ounce is I will take a spike it, dip and glow pin, and I'll just a little bit chartreuse the tail, just enough to, something a little bit different that they, when the fish is coming up to eat it, they're gonna focus on and crush the middle one, which is the quarter ounce. All right, let's see if I left anything out here. Um, I like using Kitek. Uh, I've used them all, but Kitek, they, indoc they in indoctrinate, not indoctrinate, impregnate with a good scent. And man, I just love when it smells fishy. It just helps it versus that plastic taste. Just, just me, I uh, hope that helps. Um, they are a little bit of tough to get on here. That's why you have to have split ring pliers to help you out. Always check to make those sure that everything's flowing properly, okay? And remember, I'm gonna show you a finished copy here in a second. So, 
I hope you can go out. It was absolutely amazing to catch a six and a half pounder. What was even better is that I could see it on my, my live scope. I could see the bait working and I saw this flash and I'm like, what the heck's that? <laughs> I had about a millisecond to think about it when it crushed it and just took me down. Be ready with the thumb to free spool it. Have your thumb on there to just let them take it, okay, away. They're not going anywhere too much, especially if it was over deep water. What did I focus on, okay? Here, I was focusing on a river bridge, and it was the deepest part. I could see stuff down there, but I couldn't make it out. I'm still getting used to this life scope a little bit. Uh, couldn't make it what it was, uh, but when you're fishing for big fish, especially these hybrid stripers, this time of year in the winter, they come out of their river, and, and they're, they're at the mouth of the bay, even though I was still a couple miles away from that. But they're just sitting there and they're just sitting their feet and waiting for something. They're opportunists to come by. In this case, like I said, I could see my, my G rig just kind of floating at about, the depth was about 25 foot. I could see it floating at about 12, 13 foot, just kind of doing this thing. And then all of a sudden this flash and man, I'm glad I was ready. It took me a second to find that thumb of mine because, man, you got a big fish on that. It's pulling. I finally found it, gave him some line, let him do its thing. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please share it with others because, you know, my job here and a lot of other YouTubers is we're out here not to tell you what to do, but to tell you to start getting you to think a little bit like, hey, how am I going to catch this fish? Where do I want to go? I want to go catch some hybrid stripers. Where do I go? Find a bridge, okay? Find the deepest part. I, I don't. I truly believe I still would have caught this fish without the live scope. It's just nice seeing it. You don't have to have a live scope, by the way, okay? Um, a lot of us people who've been fishing for many, many years never had the live scope. So don't feel like all pressured. I got to get a live scope to catch these big fish. No, you don't. What you got to use is you got to use your instinct and, and start thinking about, well, where, if I was a big fish, where would I want to be? I'd want to be in the deepest part, okay? Sitting there with my other buddies, Okay, and then all of a sudden, you see the Uber Eats driver coming by and saying, hey, I think I'm gonna go eat that. And you wanna be the first to eat it. Okay, start thinking like that. Start thinking where these big fish would wanna lay and go out and get it. And remember guys, you're only just one cast away.